This week's game is brought to you by Ads Floor Covering, serving the mid-cities with the finest in floor and window covering since 1945. Your local Armstrong Floor Fashion Center. And by Holly's Flakes, where you get safety and lasting quality at a reasonable price. And by Ricky's Pizza, serving the finest in Italian food since 1940. Mention this ad and receive $2 off any large pizza. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mike Weiss, and welcome to another evening of high school football on American Cable System. Tonight, the last game of the year on American Cable Systems, and it's the Battle of Bellflower. The Bellflower Buccaneers and the Mayfair Monsoons. Two clubs going in the opposite direction. Bellflower still outside shot of the wild card. They come into tonight's game at 6-2 and two overall, but 2-2 two and two in the Suburban League. Mayfair, on the other hand, 0-4 oh in the league. As you can take a look at the league standings here, Mayflower just playing for pride tonight. We'll see what they can do in this big rivalry game. Another problem tonight, though, that Bellflower will have to counter is the loss of their quarterback, Mike Simmons, last week. He separated his shoulder, and in place of him, Lawrence Robinson will be starting tonight's ball game. We'll see how Robinson takes on the Mayfair defense. Mayfair, as we said, playing for pride tonight. They come in as a 3-6 and six record overall. A big ball game for, to, to them at the end of the season. If they can go out on a winning note, we'll be back for the starting lineup and the opening kickoff right after this. Our high school, and let's go to the center of the field and watch the coin toss for a moment here as the teams get ready to come on the field. Of course, tonight will be the last game for a lot of the Mayfair seniors as they will not be going on to the playoffs. On the other hand, Bellflower will be in the playoffs most likely. And Mayfair has won the toss and elected to receive there. You can see Sean Jones, one of the captains and a fine running back for the Buccaneers. Dennis Heath, team captain for the Monsoons out there. And Coming into tonight's game, as we mentioned in the pregame show, Mayfair with a 3-6 and six record and looking to put a bright spot on the end of their season with a win tonight over their crosstown rival, the Bellflower Buccaneers. Mike Weiss along with Don Morris this evening. And Don, it's been a fun season here on American Cable Systems. We've seen some great athletes along the way. That's very true, Mike. Uh, among of, uh, most of the high schools, we have to consider Linwood, Preston Carson. Charles Levy, of course, from Linwood, has put on some great shows for us. And uh, Dennis Collier from Eisenhower had a great game against Bosco. And, of course, Perry Klein from and Fred Gatlin, the both of the quarterbacks from Carson in that great ball game against Linwood. And, of course, Russell White, just a couple of weeks ago at Crespi, we got a chance to see him break the CIF all-time rushing mark. So that was quite a quite an event to watch. Here come the monsoons onto the field. So Mayfair is the home team tonight, and this is a field that both of these teams share, so it's a little bit like when USC and UCLA used to both play at the Coliseum, and one year they would just designate one team the home team, but uh, really both teams used to playing here, and Bellflowers, the actual high school Bellflower, obviously, is just a stone throw from here about 150 yards north of the stadium itself. So tonight is the fight for the final battleground. And Bellflower onto the field now. The Buccaneers bring a 6-2 overall record, 2-2 two two in the Suburban League. And with a win tonight, they would wrap up a playoff spot as the third-place team in the Suburban League. And the 7-2 record, their best record in some four years, would go on to the first round of the CIF Southern Section playoffs. So an important game tonight for Bellflower. They cannot afford to lose. However, a loss would not necessarily knock them out. 
of the playoff hunt. Phil Roberts will kick it off tonight for the Monsoons. And a lot of the parents of the seniors out here tonight to watch their sons play in their final high school game. And uh, you get pretty pumped up to play in your final game. It's, a, it's an important event and something that uh, everybody wants to, to make a good showing in their last time out on the field, Paul, uh, Don. That's true. You know, unfortunately, Paul Simmons, I mean Mike Simmons, he was injured uh, just last week with a separated shoulder, which means he won't be playing anymore this year. Luckily, he is a junior. That's because right. He's only a junior, so he'll right. have a chance to come back and show what he's made of next year. And he's exactly. a fine young quarterback. Right. And he's, um, it, I, I pretty much feel for him, you know, the fact that this did happen in the junior year. But if it had to happen. kick along the ground, gets away from Ross. He goes back to receive it at the five-yard line and just falls on it at about the seven. And not a very auspicious debut for Bellflower here this evening as Ross just picked up the Ross could not pick the ball up in advance of it. He was smart to get the ball on the football. Let's take a look at the starting lineups on offense. Uh, we'll go to offense for Bellflower here. Lawrence Robinson in for the injured Simmons. Sin, Paul Sin and Sean Jones, the talented running back. That tailback, Sinton Ross, Ricky Bryant, and Kevin Lazard is the tight end, and he's quite an athlete. Up front, Galindo, McPherson, Lucero, Barquez, and Polanek. First and ten, Lawrence Robinson is the quarterback. He usually plays wide receiver. Let's see what Bellflower does with it on first down. The handoff is to Jones, and he's hit in the backfield by Kelsey Green, along with Dennis Heath, who is also the fullback for the Monsoons. You can see Lawrence Robinson kind of thrown into the breach last week with the injury of to Simmons, and he did a fine job last week in that big ball game versus Artesia, just coming up five points short, 14-9. He tried his heart out. Second and call it 11, a loss of a yard for Jones on that play. He's running out of his own end zone, his tailback now, and Robinson calling out the signals and hands inside to Paul Sin. He's up the middle for about six, maybe seven yards out to the 15-yard line. And it'll be third and call it two there for the Bellflower Buccaneers. Let's take a look at Mayfair's defense for you. And you can see the monsoon defense up front, Chris Kearney. Kelsey Green, Papito Papito, Greg Gonzalez at one defensive end. The linebackers, Ortiz, Watson, Heath, and Arnold. And the defensive backfield, Steve View, Eric Mitchell, and Kareem Goldsby. And the Monsoons faced with the challenge of stopping Bellflower tonight. The Buccaneers, only two losses. One, of course, last week to Artesia. Let's see what the Bucks do here on third and two. Robinson gives it to Jones up the middle, and I don't think he got the first down. Stopped by a host of tacklers from Mayfair. It's going to be close. He needed about a yard. And I don't know if they're going to call for a measurement here or not. And we'll see what happens. They're going to call time out for a measurement. And last week, of course, a tough break for the Bucks. They lost their starting quarterback, Mike Simmons, but... Certainly, Lawrence Robinson stepped in and did a fine job in that ball game. Yeah, as a matter of fact, Mike, he did. As soon as he came off the bench, he had unloaded a nice 40 or 50 yard pass. And uh, it was received, but unfortunately, when they got down to the goal line, they weren't able to execute any, uh, any points off of that play. And fourth, fourth and about six inches, as you can see there by the measurement, Don. And I and I don't think Bellflower's going to go for it, but if, I don't see the punt team coming onto the field as of right now. So a big risk here early in the ball game. Bellflower with the ball on their own 16-yard line, uh, 16 and a half calls. They're going to go for it on fourth down. And if Mayfair could hold here, boy, would that be a big swing of momentum. Thomas Mann into the ball game. You see him right there. Perhaps Mann will get the ball. No, they give us to Chad Robinson up the middle for the first down. It's Paul Sinn, and he breaks into the open field. He's the 50, the 45. He's going to go all the way. An 85-yard touchdown run for Paul Sinn. No flags. <laughs> Paul
Paul Sin takes it 83 yards on a burst up the middle. He broke past the initial wave of tacklers, and he was in the open field. There you see Sin with the football. He's almost tripped up right there, but you can see he turns on the twin turbos, and he's got number 80. What is that, number three, 83, right behind him. Nobody's going to catch him. Catch him, Kevin Lazard and Thomas Mann with the escort all the way into the end zone. And he's no got that, problem. He's got that ball tucked away as if he was about to be tackled. That's something that most uh, college coaches look at, too. Danny Schneider on to kick the extra point now for Bellflower. And he is, well, the kick is blocked, and so is Snyder. But there's penalty markers down all over. I gotta believe that was probably offsides on Mayfair, but we'll see what the call is here. Dennis Heath conferring with the officials. And again, it was offsides against Mayfair, so Bellflower with another shot at the extra point. 12 players on the defense. No, too many men on the field is what the call was. And uh, one of those too many men got in to block the kick, and so Bellflower and Danny Schneider will have another go at it. And I think now Bellflower is going to try and go for two points here. That's a costly penalty, a penalty that you got there. Yeah, it's, it's half the distance to the goal line from where you usually kick the extra point, which is about two and a half yards away. So they've got just over a yard now to go for the two-point conversion, and they're going to go ahead and try it with the full house backfield. Sin, Mann, and Sean Jones line up behind Lawrence Robinson. Robinson barking out the signals, takes the handoff, fakes, goes around the option left. He is pulled down from behind by Fafito. Fafito, a nice play, but it'll only keep him from scoring the two-point conversion as Paul Sin just took it 83 yards for a touchdown, and Bellflower leads Mayfair, six to nothing. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> 31 left in the first quarter. Six to nothing, Bellflower leading it. Should have seen him last week. <laughs> Man approaches the football, and it is a fine kick, sailing down to Heath at the 10-yard line. He's got the ball at the 15 to 20, up to the 25. Breaks a couple of tackles and is brought down at the 30 by KC Matthews, number 17, along with Chad Robinson, number 35. And that's where the Monsoons will take over on their first possession. Let's look at Mayfair's offense. Dave Parton is the quarterback. Maurice Morton and Dennis Heath behind him in the backfield. Eric Mitchell, Phil Roberts, and Jason Arnold are the receivers. Up front, Belleville, Flood, Bentance, Green, and Melendez. You notice the insignia on the helmet, so I'm A little bit reminiscent the of the Raiders there, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Heath with the give up the middle, gains about four yards. He's second in about seven. And let's look at the Bellflower Buccaneers starting defense for you. Scott Dayton, Greg Lucero, Jimmy Ratcliff, and John Hanna up front. The linebackers are Henderson, or sorry, McPherson, Sin, Robinson, and Thomas Mann. Ross, Jones, and Lazard in the defensive backfield. And right now, Ross is out of the game. Cedric Robbins in at right cornerback for the Bucks. There you can see a shot from the sidelines. And Mark Morton give on the inside, give it to Heath. And he gets about a yard if he's lucky. It'll bring up a third and six. Jorge Varguez with the stop along with Thomas Mann in there. And it's going to bring up a third and six situation for Mayfair. Dave Parton, the quarterback, talking it over with Phil Roberts, one of his wide receivers. And Mayfair, of course, coming into the game tonight is 3-6, 0-4 in the league. And a victory tonight would really put a nice cap on their season. It's been a disappointing league season, that's for sure. They came into the league with a record of 3-2 and two with some high hopes, or better hopes than an 0-4 record. They have not been able to get a, league, a win in the Suburban League. Parton looking over a third and sixth situation. Off inside to Heath. Heath has got the first down over the middle. He's stopped after a gain of about seven yards. Oh, John Robert McPherson and Paul Finn with the stop. Yeah, I hope you can hear us over the noise of the Mayfair band, which is sitting right in front of us. So we'll try and speak up anytime they speak up. Ray Smith also in on the stop of that last play, but a first down for Mayfair. 7.22 to go in the first quarter. 6-0, Mike Weiss along with Don Morris on American Cable Systems, our last game of the year. We had a great time. We brought you some great games and some great players. And we hope tonight will be an equally as good of a game. 
Carton at quarterback. He sends Mitchell in motion, and we think we've got a procedure penalty. We'll see what it is. They give it to Heath up the middle. He picks up about six yards, but there's a penalty in the monsoon backfield. And it is a legal procedure. Eric, Mar Eric Mitchell coming in motion started up the field a little bit too quickly. He picked up about six yards with about three defenders on his side, huh? And unfortunately, that fine run by Heath will be nullified by the penalty. And it's going to be a second and 15 situation now for the Monsoons. First and 15, rather. The motion, offense, first down. Once again, that penalty on Mitchell. He was coming in motion to this side of the field, and he turned upfield just before the snap of the ball. And you can't do that. You can do that in the Canadian League, but you can't do that in American football. 6-0, the Bucks looking to finish the league season at 3-2, and 7-2 and two overall, and gain some momentum going into the CIF playoffs. Parton with the give up the middle, outside is Heath, a nice breakaway tackle there. Actually, it's Maurice Morton to the outside, and he gains about five yards. You got a flag on the play? I don't know, Don, you see a flag on the field? Yeah, I just saw a flag go up. We'll see what the call is. Jorge Vargas with the stop, along with John Hanna. We got a penalty against Bellflower. And a personal foul penalty against the Buccaneers, and so when it appeared that all the momentum was on Bellflower's side, a couple of early penalties. No foul. Defense. 15 yards. Yep, 15 First yards. First down. So new life into the monsoon offense here as they've gained 20 yards on penalties against Bellflower now. And that gives them the ball just past the midfield stripe on the Bellflower 48-yard line. First and 10, Dave Parton sets the monsoon offense in motion, turns and gives it the ball off to Maurice Morton. He's pounds into the middle for a gain of about six, maybe seven yards. Brought down by Thomas Mann and a host of Bellflower tacklers there. There you see Mr. Maurice Morton. And uh, with the help of that penalty now, Don, uh, Bayfair seems to have a little bit of momentum here and uh, looking for a tying score and perhaps go ahead if they can convert on the extra point after Bellflower missed the two-point conversion try. This is what we're going to see coming up next. I think they're going to be going to the air on this next play. Okay, Don the Swami as he's been all year. We'll see if he's right a full house backfield with Eric Mitchell back there along with Heath and Morton now. Turn and the give is to Eric Mitchell. He's got the first down and more pounding into the middle of the field. He's brought down by Kevin Lazard, but not until he's down to the 28-yard line of Bellflower and a pickup of 11 yards. First down, Monsoon's moving the football. That's exactly what they want to do. Well, let's look at the replay here, John. You can see the give is to Mitchell, and he goes right behind. He fine block right there on Thomas Mann, and that brings Mitchell up the middle. Finally brought down by Bart Brim and Kevin Lazard, number 83, with the stop. Kevin Lazard is one that you cannot easily get by, too. even though they had a Mack truck hole there. First and 10, Monsoon ball at the 30-yard line of Bellflower. Parton turns and gives it off to Heath, but he's not going to go anywhere. Pulled down on the far side of the field by Lazard once again. Fine play by Kevin Lazard. If you haven't noticed when Lazard is sitting on the, on the, uh, standing on the line, you see he waits at home and watches the plays develop. And as it develops, he knows exactly where the play is going to be going to. So either he'll chase them away into another defender, or he'll wait and lay dead for the, the play to come to him. Lazard, of course, a fine all-around athlete. You'll see him if you follow Bellflower basketball. Great leaping ability, very tough inside. Parton with a second and nine pitch out. Eric Mitchell, he drops the football! And he may have gotten it back. I'm not sure. It still appears to be loose down there, but I believe Mitchell was able to recover it. But actually, it wasn't Mitchell that came up with the football. That play went by a little quick. Let's see the instant replay on that. Uh, Chad Whitney was able to... Okay, you can see where he pitches off right here. And he's, he doesn't really have the ball, but he's trying to run with it. He's trying to grab it, and it just fell out of his hand. Number 84 tries to block him away from it. Here you go. Fortunately, Lorenzo Batanzi was able to recover the football for... It looked like he ran away from the ball before he really had it. Yeah, he never really had possession of the football. Tough to do. Once again, full house backfield, and the give is to Mitchell on the inside. Same play as before, and he picks up about four yards. 
so that's much man on the stop that time for Bellflower. And 3.54 to go in the first quarter. A very impressive drive here by Mayfair, of course, aided by the big 15-yard unnecessary roughness personal foul on Bellflower. But uh, they've had some good running plays, and they've picked up some yardage against the Buccaneers. You know, Mike, uh, college scouts, when they look, when they look at uh, high school players, they actually look at how well you hold that ball, how well you tuck it away, you know, like a mother egg. Well, that's really important these days, Don, because uh, stripping the football is becoming an art at all levels of the game. And if you're watching an NFL game or a college game, stripping of the ball has become quite a skill. Parting to throw over the middle. He's got Robertson. It's complete in front of Casey or in front of Cedric Robbins at about the 15 yard line. And I believe that's enough for a first down. Robbins with a shoestring tackle, but not before Phil Roberts picks up the first down for Mayfair. At about the 14 yard line. Take a look at the replay here, Don. Here we see he drops back and he, he notices that he's got a free, free receiver open right there. You see the tackle had just missed him just after he got the got his hands on the ball. Throw for a nice first down. So we've got a timeout on the field with 3.06 to go in the first quarter. And the score, Bellflower 6, Mayfair nothing. We'll be right back after this. First and 10 on the Bellflower 15, trying to get the time score. Parton brings the monsoons up. First and 10 after that fine completion of Roberts, then Parton sets the offense in motion. In motion goes Eric Mitchell going across the far side of the field. Parton inside gives to Heath, and he pounds forward for about three or four yards. Actually, Maurice Martin with the carry that time. Second and six. So the Monsoon's looking for the tying score. Mayfair looking for the tying score here with 2.38 to go in the first quarter. 6-0 Bellflower. Second and six for the Monsoons. Parton with Heath and Morton in the backfield. Drops the throw and fought, throws to the far side. It's complete to Eric Mitchell, the 10-yard line. He tries to get away from Lazard and Bart Brem, but he can't do it. They throw him out of bounds at about the nine yard line. A pickup of six yards might be, or a pickup of about three yards actually, and it'll be third and three. You saw when he caught that ball, he tried to make some side to side motions as if he could throw him off step. A lot of times in the pro, that will work. As a matter of fact, even in college, that move will work. But against Kevin Lazar, which is a very fine athlete, no such luck. So a big third and three play now for the Monsoons. They need to get down to about the six yard line. Ball on the nine. And they're gonna crank it up again. Dave Parton, the lefty at quarterback. Drops the throw, looks, and he's gonna run it right. Eric Mitchell, great tackle by Cedric Robbins on this side. And Eric Mitchell did not get the first down. And I believe we will see the field goal unit coming on for Mayfair now. Eric Mitchell, he got lit, hit by a low missile right there. Cedric Robbins with a fine tackle, and now Dave Parton is going to come over and talk to Coach Leon Ward and see what they want to do. And I believe we're going to have a timeout called on the field. We do, and so we will take one as well with 1.10 to go here in the first half. It's Bellflower 6, Mayfair nothing. We'll be right back in a moment. Go for it, and neglect the field goal attempt, feeling that uh, last game of the year. Credit for the defense. Mayfair has had the ball for a long time right now, and I think it's been, what, about, about six minutes right now they've had possession of the ball, even though they've had two, two penalties. They gave them a, actually 30 yards for free, and they should have made something good on this by now. Well, they certainly want to take advantage of this situation, and the Monsoons have dominated time of possession, but they yet they trail six to nothing. Let's see what they do here on fourth down. Parton at quarterback, he turns and rolls to his left. He's under pressure. He's gonna throw into the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for Jason Arnold, the tight end, and had he caught it, he would have been out of bounds anyway. 
and the Buccaneers will take over on the turnover of possession. And so the Monsoons going for the tying score didn't want to get the field goal on the board and therefore could not put it into the end zone on fourth down, Don. So they suffer a loss here. They certainly do. A chance to get some points goes by the boards. 30 One yards or two to go in the first quarter. And we'll see what may, what Bellflower can do with the football. They started exactly from the same position the first time they had the ball on the opening kickoff. Lawrence Robinson turns and gives it to no play action fake to Sean Jones. Throws, it's complete out in the flat to Paul Sin. Sin with the football, and he rumbles up to a 45-yard line, and Paul Sin is having himself quite an evening. And on the two times he's caught the ball, he's already got over 100 yards of total offense, 83 yards on that long touchdown run if you missed it, and then about 32 yards on that catch right there. So a fine evening so far for Paul Sin. Well, I'll tell you, Mike. Paul Sin's not a hard target to miss, especially when you got a good quarterback. And I got to give it to Robbins that he really, Robinson, he really does have a good throwing arm. And you got to wonder uh, if Mr. Robinson won't be vying for the quarterback job next year. Pitch out to Sean Jones, nothing doing. He gets a yard, maybe two. Brought down by Greg Gonzalez and Chris Kearney. It's 6 3. I'd say Robinson had a very good shot at playing the quarterback uh, position next year as long as he can really develop his arm, because last week he had a little bit of a problem overthrowing and underthrowing most of his receivers. Well, he certainly was on target on his first pass of the evening to a wide open Paul Sin, but he looked looked smooth rolling out and throwing with the football, so. Yes, he does. See, that's the end of the first quarter with the score, Bellflower six, Mayfair nothing. We'll be back for action in the second quarter right after this. Lawrence Robinson is the quarterback for the Buccaneers, and he drops the throw under pressure, throws far side. The ball is incomplete, intended for Danny Snyder, and a ball that he should have caught, and he knows it. Maurice Morton and Damian Watson defending on the play for Mayfair, and Danny Snyder dropping what would have been a sure first down for the Buccaneers, and it'll be second and 10 now. Or Some of these quarterbacks, you know, Mike, it takes about a maybe a quarter to get their, their arm warmed up to whereby they can really be accurate once they spot where their receivers are. Well, that pass was certainly a catchable one, Don, but we'll see what Robinson has here. Back to throw on third and 10, Robinson rolling, and he's under pressure, gets it away. Just in time, the ball is caught, a fine grab over there by Sinton Ross, and he's pulled down by a host of monsoon tacklers, but not before he gets the first down. Again, Damian Watson defending on the play. So far, Robinson has been impressive. He rolls, and he's got a lot of mobility, and he's able to avoid the rush that has been a pretty heavy one so far tonight. Chris Kearney and Kelsey Green have been putting a lot of pressure on. With two complete passes, he can't go wrong. Tito Ortiz has been in the backfield. There you see Ortiz right there, the right outside linebacker for Mayfair has been getting in the backfield. Pitch out to Sean Jones, and there's that man Ortiz with the stop. And I'm not sure that they won't call that a, well, they're not gonna, but it could have been easily called a trip. I could see, you could see Ortiz using his legs his to leg. sweep Sean Jones right off of his feet. And I'm not wondering if Sean Jones might be slowed by some uh, nagging injuries tonight because he certainly doesn't look as fast as we've seen him look all season. Well, you know, I witnessed the game last week when they played against Artesia and Sean Jones, they had really shut him down in the second quarter. I mean, he couldn't get past the yard, I mean, uh, the line of scrimmage for a lot of plays. Jones is set wide right in a slot back position. Now the lone man in the backfield is Paul Sin. And Robinson drops the throw. He's under pressure. Ross coming from the outside, but it's complete over there on the far side to Sinton Ross. And he is driven out of bounds, but not before he picks up another first down for the Buccaneers. Ross is an excellent athlete as far as, you know, playing that in position. He has leaping abilities for his size. He has speed abilities for his size. Low to the ground and built for speed. Plenty of calf muscle for jumping the height. Maurice Watson again on the stop. So another first down for the Buccaneers, and they continue to look impressive on offense so far tonight. They're at the 
Mount there at the monsoon 36 yard line, first and 10. Robinson turns and gives off to Paul Sin. Nothing doing that time. Faputo, Faputo on the stop along with Chris Kelsey. And Paul Sin stopped for the first time this evening.